everyone. We want to welcome you today to the We Are Floor Pearl podcast. I am your host, Latasha J. Humphrey, founder of the Floor Pearl Foundation Incorporated. I am super, super excited to get into the podcast today. But before we get started, we want to let our audience know that this podcast is being brought to you by the Floor Pearl Foundation Incorporated, where our vision is bridging the gap and building a legacy. Our mission is that we are a 501c3 community-focused nonprofit mentoring organization building healthy relationships and partnerships between women and girls through education, community service, networking, unification, and career planning. Our inspiration is for Pearl Humphrey. She was my paternal grandmother, and she taught me a lot about faith, family, and community, and that is where I draw a lot of my inspiration from. So audience, I have the pleasure of introducing this beautiful gem to you. She's someone who I've had the pleasure of meeting um, within the last year or maybe over a year ago. She's one of my reasons why I do what I do, and I am blessed to know her. This young woman is truly a blessing. So without further ado, I present to you Kelly Blackman. Hi, Kelly. Hey, how are you? I'm doing well. How about you? I'm doing good. I'm very good. Good, good. We are so blessed to have you with us today. And if you would, just go ahead and introduce yourself to our audience. Yeah, sure. Um, so my name is Kelly Blackman. I'm a freshman at Howard University. Um, and I actually did not Howard intro. Um, I'm a human development major, freshman. Uh, minor is psychology. So I'm excited. Awesome. Awesome. And I have a, a few things I want to ask as it relates to, you know, being at the HBCU. But first, I wanted to ask you a question, you know, um, as it relates to Black History Month, uh, you know, our mission, well, our, our vision is bridging the gap, building a legacy. So as a young woman, what does Black History Month mean to you? Well, to me, Black History Month, um, it's an important time, not only because I am Black, um, I think being black is one of the best things ever, honestly. We have just so much culture and, honestly, diversity within um, our race. Uh, but being a black woman, um, to me, that's just something even more powerful. Um, as women, I feel as though we're, I mean, we birth men, so that is definitely a benefit the fact that we birth black men. Mm-hmm. I think that's something that's so cool because black men have done so much. And just the thought of it, um, just the thought that, you know, we were, we helped birth that, you know, we carried that in our room for nine months. I think that is the coolest thing. And unfortunately, um, in black history, you you don't hear too much about um, black women who helped, you know, um, helped black people other than, you know, the typicals, you know, Rosa Parks, Madam C.J. Walker, the John of Truth. So um, I definitely am astounded to A, be a black woman or black woman who uh, who is going to make a change. And so hopefully, I'm, you know, one of the next few people who, like, you know, who inspires a black girl. Um, because honestly, like I said, there aren't too many uh, black women or too many different black women you can look up to uh, right now, I would say. Well, there are, but we don't know, you know, too much about them. And I would definitely say being at Howard has opened my eyes to some of the ones that you don't hear about every day. So that's cool. Wow. Yeah. And and just in following up with that, you know, um, education is a, a big area for us as well. Uh, but just what you were saying with, you know, even being at an HBCU, you know, if you would share a little bit of just your experience, you know, and being a freshman this year, you know, how has that experience um, been for you thus far? going on. 
on, you know, it's just, I love it. And then there's diversity. There's so much diversity within Howard. It just really makes you appreciate yourself. And, you know, it, it's really big on self-love. I definitely would say as a freshman coming in, that was one of the biggest things that I gained already, which is a love for myself, love for being a black woman and being, you know, a unique black woman. You know, it's just, I've seen so many different um, types of black, from Caribbean to Jamaican to Trinidadian to, you know, people who are from California to Alabama, you know, just everywhere. And it's, it's so cool to see that even across all of these different uh, regions that it's still some of those things that are, you know, the same with being black. And I do, I love it. And like I said, I love the region where Howard is in, the fact that we get to be in the midst of such change. I think that's awesome. And then also the fact, one thing that, um, that Howard stands on actually is excellent and truth and service. And one of the things that we always like to say, you know, is how it's treated black excellence and truth and service. And that really, it's such a, I guess, cool thing to just be in the midst of students who not only know how to, you know, turn up and have fun, but at the same time, they're just as willing and ready and serious about their studies and about going that, doing better and, you know, going higher. I just, it's literally the best of both worlds, and I really love it. Wow, wow. So you you really have built a lot of um, healthy um, just relationships, uh, you know, uh, between, well, as far as with, with other young women as yourself, but just other, you know, other people, period, you, you've built, um, have you have you noticed that you have, have a strong support system even there? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, one of the first people, actually, who I met was my RA, you know, coming into the dorm. Um, she was just so nice, so friendly, you know. She really took a lot of the nervousness and concerns that not only myself, but my parents had about me. A, going so far from home and then B, you know, really only kind of being the only one out here <clears throat> um, from Alabama or the only person that I knew from Alabama was my son. Mm-hmm. She really alleviated some of that stress. And it's definitely, um, it's, the school isn't set up to, like the social structure, it's not one that's like so heavy on your classification. So everybody is so nice. And um, we all just kind of have that mindset like, you know, hey, we're here to learn. And I honestly did not expect the kind of support that I've gotten from uh, freshmen, from uh, sophomores, juniors, ladies, guys, um, even my uh, GA, my graduate assistant who lives on my floor, she's been there super nice. You know, she's, what, 15 years older than me. It's just so much support on this campus, and it, I love it. And not only uh, support that I'm getting via the campus, but even my support system back home, it's almost, I would dare I say, strengthened, but I honestly do feel as though, you know, that support system, um, from home has strengthened, and I just I love it. Awesome, awesome. Well, that's big ups to the HBCUs because you know sometimes HBCUs don't get a whole lot of love. So I definitely appreciate you sharing, you know, right. about your experience and um, you know, and just telling people that it it is a lot of love. You know, there there is a lot of um things to be proud of. You know, even in being a student you know, at a HBCU. So, so that's awesome um, to hear. And I wanted to kind of um, move into what you were saying, being in DC, how is the political environment and just, you know, the whole environment of different things that are going on. I saw, you know, your pictures online for the Women's March. And um, I wanted you to share, you know, with our audience, how either that experience changed or helped to strengthen your beliefs you know, in women's rights. If you could, you know, just share with us about that experience. Right. So starting out, you know, um, I have definitely been one who's, you know, proud to be a woman. I'm definitely, you know, I'm proud to be a woman. Uh, but a lot of the rights that, you know, a lot of the women out there were marching for, 
I had had, you know, no personal experience with. And I honestly, I didn't even have a secondary experience. No, you know, nobody in my surrounding circle, I would say, had experienced any of the things that, you know, some of those women out there have experienced. You know, I will say that I have, you know, experienced, um, I guess, feeling as a second tier, you know, citizen almost, um, from being a woman. But definitely not to the, um, I guess, uh, to the degree that some of the other women had um, had experienced out there. So being out there with them, you know, marching for a unified cause, it was just so, so empowering, empowering. <laughs> and um, it definitely, it definitely did strengthen my support for women's rights. I was already supportive. But I was definitely in the middle. Like I was, I wasn't one to just, you know, go out and fight and stand for the rights. But I also wasn't one that, you know, shut other people down who didn't want to go fight for the rights. But definitely after this, I've become so much more conscious, I would say, to women's rights and um, just when even with laws, um, a lot of the laws that have been passed, or a lot of, you know, both CNN um, news reports, I've started to like look into them a little more and just see, you know, how it affects women, per se, because <clears throat> something I found out while I was out there was, like, a lot of the newer laws and bills and whatnot, they actually exclude women or they're, like, twisted against women, and that was just something that was astounding to me. I didn't, I didn't know that the legal system was still so much against women as it was, and so... It's definitely strengthened my support in women's rights and support of those who are fighting for women's rights. Right, right. And that's um that's really good and even, you know, next month I'm I'm so curious to see what, you know, the outcome will be because when um when at the march when America Ferreira had given out the code about texting, you know, the word woman to that and the information was gathered um, uh, it was, you know, with your email, it was kind of all of the different information. I, I'm curious to see what is going to transpire next month with that. And, you know, how, you know, even lo- locally and, you know, just how we can all join forces and, and do something to, um, to stay unified, but also, you know, keep, keep the, basically keep the cause in front of us and, and really see change actually happen. Um, right you know, in a lot of those areas. So, so yeah, I'm really excited about that. And, um, and I wanted to, to segue, you know, into the community service aspect of, um, you know, just with the Flora Pro Foundation, we're starting, you know, that the new junior board of advisors, and we're very proud that um, you have decided to serve as the vice president of that branch of the vision this year. And I wanted to know what made you want to serve in that capacity? Um, I would say one of the biggest things is because I I love the mission of Flora Coral Foundation. I think it's an awesome mission. I think um, I just I, I really I really appreciate you know the bridging the gap um, you know motto I guess of the foundation. And so you know when you asked me to join, I was like, yeah, I will definitely join because. Um, I, I enjoy putting my time and effort into things that, in my eyes, and even in somebody else's eyes, are successful and they're important. And I could tell this was, you know, very, very important to you. And even once I started to look at the mission and the model and whatnot, it became important to me. And I just love the fact that y'all are all about um, bridging the gap, you know, and looking at multi-generational, you know, women and how that affects um, young girls and just looking at the relationship um, across the board almost. And even the community service aspect, you know, one of the biggest things um, I personally believe is even though, like, you can bridge the gap without, I guess, having to be blood-related to somebody. So the fact that I feel as though I am the you know, 19-year-old girl, I feel as though I can bridge the gap with somebody who, let's say, 7 and 10, you know? Yeah. Um, Because there's still wisdom that I can, um, that my mom or my grandmother has given 
in me that I can return or I can give to that younger girl, even though, you know, she may not know me at all. You know, I think a lot of things, you know, with us being women and being black women even at that, you know, it's a lot of things, like I was saying earlier, a lot of things um, are the same. You know, a lot of the issues that our grandparents were dealing with, even though they're not, you know, cookie cutter the same, there's still a lot of the same um, in a broad sense. And so I definitely um, would enjoy just being a part of that and being able to contribute in that any way I can. Awesome. Awesome. And if you would share with different ways that you um, you have served the community and also you continue to serve even outside of the junior board. Right. Okay. So um, even I would say at the youngest age, um, I really enjoy, you know, just hanging out with kids. And I'm definitely the big, or a very big promoter in, um, you know, the kids are our future. You know, we have to nurture them and love them and whatnot. So a lot of the community service I've done is just, you know, been helping out with kids. Um, I actually helped with Girls, Inc. for about two months or so while I was in high school, and I enjoyed it so much. You know, really just um, being able to bond with, you know, girls younger than me and girls who even only a year apart from me. Um, it was just so much fun. Um some other things I've done, I've worked with um, DHR, and we were able to uh, do different seminars for them, and we were able to help sort toys, and then we were able to go pass them out. And so, you know, just being able to do things like that, I really enjoy it. And even this past summer, um, I was working with Urban Ministry, and okay. we were painting houses for lower-income families. And I was there the entire summer, and it was such a empowering, dare I say, you know, or if there's any other, I would say moving experience, because, you know, in Alabama, or in, even in Birmingham, because that's what we were doing, we were painting the houses, they were in Birmingham, and so I just didn't know, you know, how, I guess, how important, you know, a can of paint or a couple can, can, cans of paint where, you know, on somebody's house, but the look of the faces of the homeowners, you know, once we finished, a lot of them ended up crying, and I was just, you know, so appalled, you know, that me painting, you know, or helping paint their house could just move them to tears, and it was just really, really a, a life-changing and a humbling experience, for things like that. So I really just enjoy serving the community, you know, to... You know, just to strengthen the build the place where I grew up. Yeah, yeah. And that's a true testament to of, you know, just who you are as a person and, you know, even in being a giver and wanting to give back and wanting to, you know, build up the community any way that you can. And that's something that I really, um, you know, just admire about you and just you uh, being willing to, you know, just step in whenever um, needed or you know, just, just having that giving heart. And so, um, that's something to be celebrated. And, um, you know, I wanted to ask you, you know, with that, it has to have a lot to do, of course, with your upbringing and, you know, the, the seeds that have been sown into your life in order for you to be who you are today. And so I wanted to ask you, you know, with, with your mom, you know, what, um, has your relationship with your mom? What does she teach you about yourself? Um, I would say some of the biggest things that my mom has taught me about myself. Um, one of the things I have or that she has, you know, told me or even spoke on me or, you know, complimented to me on, I would say, is just my knowledge and how nice I am. And, I mean, honestly, from the youngest age, one of the things I can always remember her saying, she's just so nice, she's so sweet, you're so sweet. Oh, and it, it really, it really impacted me in a way because, I don't know, hearing that from such a young age, I, I always wanted to almost outdo myself with how nice I could be. I know that sounds kind of silly, but I don't know. I just, I enjoyed, I enjoyed the feeling that I got when she was happy and she would be happy when I was nice. And so I was like, oh man, it's an awesome feeling. So 
you know, how can I be nice and kind of speak to others? And so that's definitely one of the things, I would guess I would say one of the pillars of my personality that I would, you know, wholeheartedly and, you know, you know, give to her. Um, or uh, I would say that she instilled in me. Um, another one is just smart. My mom is very, very smart. She's an accountant. And I, you know, I feel like you have to be very smart, yeah, right. um, willing to <clears throat> pay attention to detail and whatnot, to be an accountant, because I could never do it, um, <laughs> I want to do it. And so, uh, one of the things that, again, that she just instilled in me, she, was all, she always used to tell me, it's so smart, it's so smart, um, you know, pay attention to detail, you know, things like that. And so, those are some of the things that I would definitely say. Um, I would credit her for for instilling in me and for building me up and whatnot. And, you know, it's just amazing <laughs> those, that those few, um, I guess, compliments, you know. And they weren't even, you know, necessarily so long and drawn out. They would just be like, oh, man, you're so smart, you know. But after 18 or 19 years of, you know, that constant, constant, compliment almost on a daily basis, you know, it really starts to make you want to uh, play those things out and continue to play those things out. Right, right. And could you, you know, in that way, speak to a mom and letting, uh, you know, her know how the importance of the words that she says to her daughter, how they affect um, her daughter? Oh, man, yes, wholeheartedly. Um, they are definitely, um, you know, like the most important important words that, you know, you could speak to your daughter or your children, period, but definitely your daughter. Because I know as, as a girl, you know, who looks up to their mom, this month, almost our blueprint, I would definitely say, you're definitely our blueprint. And then, especially if we look like you, you're almost our carbon copy. And I know... Um, a lot of kids, and I would even say myself, we gonna we are going to mimic you guys. And so anything that you do or even say about us or to us, we will in turn start to say that about ourselves. So like the way my mom used to say, you know, oh, you're so nice, you're so nice. I used to, you know, go around saying, oh, I'm so nice, I'm so nice. And in the same way, I'm sure, if, you know, if you as a mom were to have not as nice words to say to your daughter, those are things that she's going to, you know, internalize and start to think about herself and may even, may even start to repeat them herself, you know, about herself. And that's just, you know, that's not necessarily what you, what you would want. You know, you want your daughter to have a so and self-esteem or whatnot. And also, not even the words that, um, as a mom, that you speak uh, to to us, but even the words that you speak about yourself, we're paying attention. Mm, because mm-hmm. also, in our heads, you know, we're going to grow up to be like you. You know, this is almost, you know, how people say, and our husbands say, you know, look at the mom, because that's who you're going to be in such, mm. such, amount, in such amount of years. You know, it's the same thing. You know, we're looking and we're saying, okay, this is who I'm going to be, you know, give or take a couple personalities or whatnot, but you know, for the most part, this is who I'm going to be. Um, and so if you're constantly tearing yourself down, we're going to start saying, oh, well, I have that thing about me too, so I'm going to tear myself down, you know. And so it really is important to, you know, build yourself up. And I'm not saying, you know, be a superwoman or anything, but even in those moments that you're not necessarily, you know, you might be feeling, you know, a little, uh, you know, not your best that day or whatnot, but I think one of the biggest things as a mom, talk to us about it as a girl to say, okay, this is the way I'm feeling today, you know, and these are the tools that you can use to help yourself get through them. Because if you, even if you are having a bad day or whatnot, and you don't show us the way to get through it, and we see you having a bad day, because honestly, as kids, we see everything. You know, even if you don't think we see everything, we've spent, you know, all of our lives with you pretty much, you know, even that nine months in the womb. So we, we know you, you know? Right, so right. if you, if, um, if something is off that day, we're going to pick up on it. If you're extremely happy, if you're extremely sad, or even, you know, if you think you're hiding it, you're not, you know, we know. And so I think the best way would be, 
as it relates to words. Um, you know, be honest with this. You know, you don't have to go into detail or whatnot, but just say, uh, you know, this is an emotion that I'm feeling today, and you're going to feel these emotions as well at some point in your life. And so these are healthy, this is a healthy way to get through it, you know, and to, you know, come talk to me about it. And so I definitely believe that an open dialogue is the best thing that um, a mother can give her daughter, you know, and uh, positive reinforcement and positive words because those things really, really plant a deep seed that, I mean, if they're positive, they'll grow and they'll stay for your life and her life forever. Um, and if they're negative, they'll also stay and grow. Um, and they really, they really start to shape, shape the child. And so definitely, I definitely think that, um, that all that to say, <laughs> um, you know, the words that you speak to your daughter are definitely very important. So, you know, be conscious, you know, about making them positive words. And even, and it's not to say, you know, every time you're going to say the right thing, mm-hmm. but it definitely should be a, um, I can remember more times when my mom has spoken me up than, ter- than torn me down. You know? Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, that's, that's good. And that's, um, I mean, that's just very sincere, you know, in, um, in saying that, you know, about the, the words about, you know, um, those positive things that you're saying. And that's really good to know, you know, that you heard more positive than, than negative, you know, and, um, and I wanted to, with that, you know, we'll just wanted to segue into the faith aspect of it. You know, how important has your faith been to you? Right. My faith, my faith has been so important. Um, and it's, honestly, it was something that was developed before I was even born, I would say. Like, um, that's one thing that I really, really just appreciate and I'm so grateful for, um, for my family because my family is just such a faith-based family. Mm -hmm. Um, everybody virtually in my family goes to church, but then even my immediate family, um, my, my dad, he's like an amazing prayer. And so, I mean, even as kids, I can remember, um, praying was one of the things that was just, it was, you know, a part it was just a part of our family. Um, and I'm not going to lie, sometimes, because we even used to, um, or we still do, we pray on Christmas morning before we open presents and one night. And I was, you know, as a five-year-old kid, I was just like, oh, man, do we have to do this? You know? <laughs> um, but I was, you know, I was like, I'm going to open presents or one night. But um, it, it, it's definitely, it was such a good foundation, I would definitely say. I mean, we prayed all the time and, we were always, we always had an open dialogue about God and, you know, about the things he can do for us. And uh, my mom, <laughs> she likes to remind me that, you know, when I was a little kid, um, and she would like, we having a headache or something, um, I would ask her, and she would, you know, say, you know, I'm having a headache or not feeling too well. I would go behind her and I'd say, did you? And that, you know, signified her that I was saying, you know, did you pray about it? Because, like I said, we had just been, so indoctrined and praying and, you know, the fact that God can do anything. So I, you know, as a kid, I'm just like, you know, you just need to pray about it. Like, what are you doing? You're the reason you have the headache, you know? <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, uh, my faith has just been so important. And, I don't know, I honestly feel, I'm just so blessed to have all the opportunities that I've had thus far. It's just, it's my mom, my following to me and I honor it, you know, a hundred percent to God and, you know, just the connection I've had with him and, you know, his grace and mercy that he's given me. And not just me, but like also I would also say my faith isn't <laughs> all mine. Like I honestly and truly believe that a lot of my faith has to do with the faith that my parents had, the faith that my grandparents had that I I cannot, you know, be having all of the blessings that I'm having solely based on my faith. So although it is important, and I truly, truly <clears throat> um, am grateful, you know, and I um, appreciate my um, relationship with God, I 
I do believe that my faith is almost, is a next level, you know, because of my parents' faith and because of my grandparents' faith. So it's almost like a build on. And I feel as though I wouldn't be as far along in my faith walk had it not been, you know, for the foundation that my parents are building in me and for the foundation that my parents' parents are building them, you know, and so forth. So I will. I'm a woman of faith. Uh, um, you know, I, I love, I, yeah. I mean, <laughs> faith is just really important to me. <laughs> I had to, you know, numb it down. Yeah, yeah. And Kim, will you share a time, you know, when your faith has been tested and how you came through it to encourage our audience? Right. Um, so I would definitely say my faith was tested the most when I first came out of the closet. Um, I would definitely say that was the most tested part of my faith. Um, because I think I'm Thank you so much for, you know, sharing that and being open, you know, about that. And 
Um, we're going to uh, get into our closing segment, Kelly, and it's called Matters of the Heart Moment. And so if you had the opportunity to speak to your four-year-old self, what would you say to her? Oh, wow. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm going to go two ways. So first, I'm going to go a little comedic. Um, <laughs> definitely, you know, do your work. You know, at four years old. Oh, at four, was that? No, I wasn't in, I wasn't in school yet at four. Um, let's see. I guess, like, stop giving your parents such a hard time. Is like, you know, at four. Um, but I would say in a serious tone, um, Oh, man, it's so much, I would say. Um, but I think the biggest thing is for is just, um, let's see. I guess stick to you, like, continue to be you. Don't lose that personality that you have. Don't lose that niceness that your mom talked about. Don't lose that sweetness that your mom talked about, you know, because as you get older, the amount of people who are smiling and who are nice is going to go down so dramatically. It's going to go down drastically and quickly. And so you need to be, you know, that smiler, that one who's always willing to be like, hi, how are you? You know, that nice person and the one who people may even look at as an oddity and they, you know, talk about and say, oh, man, that girl is weird because why is she so nice and talking and whatnot? But honestly... That's what people are going to, you know, somebody is going to need your smile and face. They're going to need your kind words. They're going to need a sense of humor, you know, your, I guess, I guess your love, you know. So definitely um, keep your personality, you know. Uh, don't lose it. Don't let, you know, any of the things that you might go through, don't let it, you know, fall away. Don't don't let the world make you cold, I guess, is the, is the quote I would say. Don't let the world make you cold because... I mean, it's a rough world out there. So, you know, it, it is very easy to lose that love for people and lose that um, carefree type of attitude. But I definitely, I definitely want you to keep it because it's something that's unique to you and it's something that's special to you and it's something people are going to pick up on immediately and you're going to be able to affect or inflict so much change um, to people into their hearts because you have that love and that kindness. Awesome. And who motivates you? Um, okay, who motivates me? I don't know if I have one one particular person. Um, I don't know. I'm motivated by a lot of different things. You know, I'm definitely, um, I don't know. I don't have one particular person who motivates me. Um, but, my mom definitely motivates me. She motivates me to be, um, to definitely continue and to have drive. Um, I would even say you motivate me. You know, all the talks we've had, I just really appreciate it. And um, my grandmother motivates me. Um, I would just say a, a collection of black women motivate me um, just from, you know, going through the struggles that they've gone through and the fact that they're still able to smile. Um, so I would say, I would say black women motivate me because I feel as though black women have gone through some of the hardest times um, just as a people, you know, and yet we're still so loving. I think black women can be some of the most loving women ever, you know, regardless of how they choose to express that love, I feel as though black women are the most loving women ever, and they are the most unique women or people ever. So I would say all black women motivate me um, to be better, to do better, and to live better. That's beautiful. And if you would, you know, share a last-minute piece of advice. Okay, um, a last-minute piece of advice. Let's see. Um, I, it would, I guess it would be the same, the same thing that I gave, that I said to my four-year-old self. Um, you know, keep your personality. Don't let the world change your personality. Whether it be uh, a lot of situations that have been tough, that have made you want to recruit and shy away. You know, um, it gets better. 
it definitely gets better. Um, and you just have to live through it and see the next day because the next day is going to get better. And, you know, just, just don't, don't take things too seriously, I would definitely say, because nothing, nothing is worth, um, is worth you being depressed about and nothing is worth you, I guess, losing yourself in. So definitely just let things go, I would say. That's a very kind of shitty statement. But, uh, you know, let things go, you know, let things fly away in the wind. And, you know, uh, hold, hold on to your personality because I truly believe that everybody has a beautiful personality and we all need these different personalities to... Uh, mesh with our own so that we can have a beautiful and unique society. Awesome. Well, Kelly, we want to thank you so, so much for being with us today and sharing with us. We really appreciate you for that. Awesome. And our goal here at the Flora Pearl Foundation is to always be a blessing to all those we come in contact with by operating with the spirit of excellence. We want to thank you all so much for listening today. And you can visit our website at www.florapearlfoundation.org. We look forward to spending time with each of you and we'll talk to you soon.